Citizens meeting. Today is January the 10th, 2023. We're calling the meeting to order at about 8.38. And proper notice has been given as required under the Ohio Revised Code 121.22. We're going to begin our meeting now with the Pledge of Allegiance, and we're asking everyone to stand. And those individuals who have served for our country in the military, if you will lead us in the pledge, please. Allegiance to the flag. Thank you. And again, as always, thank you for serving our country. And we are so fortunate to have military uh, staff with us, and we're blessed as well. On the agenda next, we have board meeting minutes. Those minutes are from the December 13th, 2022nd meeting. The minutes have been sent for review. Any questions, discussion, decision, adjustments? I'll move approval of the minutes. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone uh, abstaining? Anyone opposed? That motion carries. Next is the update on the November 2022 general election anomaly report. <coughs> uh, Yes, if we can just, Sherry, if you can uh, pre pre present that to us, please. Sure, sure. Yes, if the board recalls, there were 28 anomalies uh, <coughs> pending after the 2022 general election was completed. Uh, at the board's meeting uh, <coughs> last month, the board decided to take no further action on 12 of those voters and to refer one to the prosecutor's office for further investigation, and that was done uh, last month. That leaves uh, 15 remaining voting anomalies. Uh, they're reflected on the spreadsheet that's in your packet. The deputy director and I mailed letters to all 15 of those voters that we've been, we had been unable to reach them by phone or email. Uh, in those letters, we requested that the voter contact one of us no later than last Friday, January 6th. We heard from eight of those voters. Uh, those voters, uh, it's our recommendation, gave reasonable explanations for casting two ballots in the election. Again, only one ballot was counted in each one of these um, anomalies. Uh, that leaves seven voters that we just simply have been unable uh, to reach. Those voters are highlighted on the spreadsheet, um, and we feel that we've really exhausted the resources that we have here at the board in trying to uh, communicate with those voters regarding these anomalies. So I, I just have a question about the number one. Did we send, have we sent certified letters out to these individuals as well? We did not send them. We sent them by regular mail. Um, and uh, the regular mail was sent and it has not been returned. That's correct. Sure. We finished up. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, what, have we, what have we typically done when we get to this point? Because I, I, when you say we've exhausted, I, I, I've got an, another idea that may mean that we could do one other step, but what have we typically done at this juncture? <coughs> I, I believe in the past, um, if we've been unable to communicate with a voter, uh, the board has referred to the prosecutor's office f for further investigation to allow the prosecutor's office to try to reach these voters. But if you have another suggestion. I mean, I, the only thing I was thinking is we, I don't, I think the certified mail gets your attention. <laughs> so I was thinking if we, if, so since it's only seven, and again, I'd almost rather maybe not do this in public session, but, um, uh, you know, a certified letter that says you are now being referred to the prosecutor's office, you have 30 days to contact us, and at least we've given them one last chance, and then 30 days later we can refer it. I don't know, just an idea. I, I, I'm feeling the same way because um, I, I, there's still another methodology available, and I think we should use that if, as much as we can. But well, we also know that the reality is that very few of these ultimately get prosecuted because they're not worthy of prosecution. That's so, right. but I do I do think that it's first of all I appreciate very much that this board is so diligent about following up, and I want the citizens to know how important um, you know we take it, uh, how important this matter is that potentially people are trying to vote twice. But again, in 99 percent of the times, there's a totally reasonable explanation. Uh, so uh, anyway, that just an idea I su might suggest is that we, we, we quote, vote to refer, 
but we also do a certified letter to the seven people, giving people a 30-day window or less to contact the board. <coughs> and then, you know, after that window, you can send over a letter to the prosecution and see where we go. Just a suggestion. I think it's a great suggestion because I was thinking about another alternative before we roll it out to the prosecutor. And also looking at the time frame, I mean, in the month of December, maybe people are out of town. You know, or there's various reasons why, perhaps. I don't think this is maliciously a person, you know, and, and, committing any fraud. So, And in your interest of fairness, too, again, I, not, not that we want to be, you know, inappropriate about age, but we've got, you know, one voter born 20, 1927, another voter 1936. 36. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, and the last thing you want to do is sort of alarm people who just maybe are, you know, you know, in a, in a different place. So, um, need a motion? Do we need to make that as a motion, or can we just go ahead? Can we just direct the board, the staff, to do that? Send a certified. I just wonder if staff has any additional input before I make the uh, motion. I, I, th I think the, you know, the, the suggestion that Alex had was is as you vote to refer today, and then and then not refer until you get back the certified whatever. Yeah. Why can't you do it so. the opposite way? Send a certified letter out, and if there's, n if it does not, if it returns, then talk about it at your next meeting. Yes. All right. Then uh, you don't need a motion to send a certified mail. If that's your question. Yes. Yeah, I'm in favor of that way. Just send a certified letter, and then, Correct. if nothing happens, refer. Let's, let's, how about yeah? How about then we just table the question until uh, the further meeting with with the board being uh, united on the question of how we handle it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that work? Okay. okay that was, thank you. Good discussion. Next on the agenda, personnel matters, salary adjustments. Ms. Polman? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, the uh, deputy director and I have received the 2023 approved budget from the commissioners, and based upon that budget, um, it's our recommendation for the board to approve a 3% cost of living adjustment for all full-time employees of the board, retroactive to the first pay period of 2023. I'll move approval of those salary adjustments. I'd gladly to be happy to do that. Second. <laughs> Any more discussion? And I wholeheartedly support that as well. Again, special big thanks to all of our staff for jobs well done. Uh, any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? That, uh, that motion is carried. Other business? Uh, just a few things under other business. One, uh, the Ohio Association of Election Officials <coughs> Conference is taking place in Columbus this week. Um, you know, all of our board members will be attending uh, along with several, uh, with our administrators and several um, of our staff, we wanted to report that we have 10 um, employees uh, graduating from the REO program um, at conference. Uh, so that that's exciting as we, you know, obviously continue to train and, and educate our staff on election administration. Um, so, and there is in your uh, packet some information about the conference, the agenda, as well as um, the map and some other information. Thank you. Thank you. So we have 10. That's fantastic. Okay. Are we taking these, are we supposed to take these with us, these yes. exemptions? Yes. So you go ahead and take those with you. Um, in the packet, there is a tax exemption form that you turn in to the hotel. Your reservations have all been made. Um, but you will need to submit that tax exempt form um, when one? you appear to, to check in at the hotel. Are we are we at two different hotels? Uh, there, some staff is at a different hotel. Okay. I believe all the board members are at the um, Hilton. Okay, so I need this one. Okay. Yeah. So you need the one for the Hilton. I didn't realize the one for the Hampton had been had been given to you. Okay. All right. Um, and then as far as checking in for conference, the association has asked that just one um, uh, staff member from each county check in for every everyone in the county that's attending conference. So um, I think we landed on one of our administrators would take care of that. So um, we'll, we'll make sure to get that information to you when you arrive at conference, Thank your you. packets. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, also want to note that our administrators have volunteered to um, handle the check-in process to help the association out. So we appreciate them doing that. Was that volunteer or voluntold? <laughs> I'm in the latter. <laughs> um, and, and then we also wanted to give the board an update on implementation of our new voter registration system. You know, this has been a very long process as it was you know, delayed um, due to COVID and then it was delayed due to the three countywide elections. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to recognize our um, CIO, Bill McJoint, you know, has just put in a tremendous amount of time the past year working with the Secretary of State's office as well as the vendor and getting us in a good place uh, security wise um, and, and implementing um, uh, this this new system our, our old system was implemented almost 20 years ago oh my goodness so oh my it's goodness. it's time for the change um, we have designated team captains in each department to help lead the way with this implementation um, they are received some training earlier in the year but we're doing um, a more a sort of a refresher training the week of January 23rd from the vendor, we're then going to do an end-to-end -end mock election with the system so that we can test all the processes before we go live. Um, after the mock election, uh, the remainder of staff will be trained and, and we hope to go live um, at the end of February, pending the results of the of the mock election. So we think, you know, there'll be some, some growing pains with this and learning curve something new but we think the end result you know it'll have a very positive impact on our processes here so with the migration of the vr from the old system which was esns to 10x correct is that is it, do we need the cooperation of esns at, at any point we've we've already converted the data yeah. correct <clears throat> bill um now there's so there's you know I don't know out of how many records that we've. Okay. I, yeah. They're hard to work so with. So we have a system in place. We've got it organized in such a manner that you have trained a trainer, and then you'll be assessing the process as we're moving along, and then also being able to measure the outcomes if there are any hiccups along the way. Right. Correct. Yes. I guess the good thing is I don't think we have a countywide election this May, do we? Not to our knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so that should don't be easy. Yeah, that should be soon. nice. <laughs> All right. Anything else? All right. You all have anything? <coughs> then uh, if there's no other business, I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed or abstaining? As I said, none but the devil. Thank you all. Our next meeting is Monday, February the 13th, 2023 at 830. Thank you much.